Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to another one of my Future Fight Vanguard series. Um, so we are back uh, again uh, after, I guess, what seems like a really long time because my computer had a few things going on with it. Um, but yeah, we're back in full force now. And uh, speaking of forces, we are going to be covering the Aquaforce GB8 today. I know some of you have been waiting a while for this. And it took me a really long time to make this, like, content because this specific one, like, the gb is really, like, meh. Like, it's extremely meh, and then we're in, like, a format where Aquaforce is meh. So, it was really hard to, like, uh, record, like, some quality fo footage on that Aquaforce deck. Like, I literally tried Thavis, I tried Blue Wave, I tried Maelstrom, I tried everything. I tried uh, Pure Wave, like... It was ridiculous, but um, I finally ended up settling on uh, Blue Wave, and so yeah, that's the deck we're going to be talking about today. Um, but uh, some side notes, uh, yeah, guys, do uh, check out my social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Patreon. Um, I'm be building my community right now on Patreon, so if you guys would like to be part of like box contests and all of this stuff uh, be sure to check out my patreon down below in the description and uh, you can see how all that stuff works but without further ado uh, let's get right into the deck so we're gonna unflip all of our G zone units as usual yeah all right so we're gonna start with our grade threes as usual uh, we're running both of the blue wave I mean, there's technically three Blue Wave uh, Grade 3s, but uh, these are the ones I like the most just because of how versatile they are. Um, so our number one Mochacho or Brochacho or uh, Fish Chacho, however you would like to say it, Dragon Chacho, uh, is uh, Blue Wave Dragon, Anger Boil Dragon. Uh, so it has two abilities, um, and it's a Tear Dragon, meaning that it... Uh, brings tears from your opponent <laughs> but uh it has two abilities uh first one is generation break two uh wave two so what wave is for those of you who don't know that is the aqua force keyword um wave is basically it will always say wave and then a number of the attacks so aqua force focuses on doing like a lot of attacks so uh, most of their abilities focus around if they have wave uh they focus on you being able to use an ability during a certain attack or an attack past that attack that um, you're on. So a wave ability can either be a specific number of attack so that like uh, ability can only be used on the second attack or something uh, like Lucianos over here or um, or anger boils on stride skill himself. So uh, it has a generation break two wave ability for the second time when this um, when this unit attacks a vanguard, if it is the second battle, uh, this unit gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the turn. Then you can choose up to one of your rear guards, stand it, and it gets plus 10,000 power until the end of the turn. So this is like a, a mini Lambros um, in the form of a GB2 skill, which is actually really, really, really solid. Um, you can use it well with... Uh, the only thing you can't use it well with really is Lucianos, which is unfortunate. Uh, but you can attack with Foivos then Anger Boil, then Foivos, and use Foivos wave, uh, wave 3 ability. So that's always fun. Um, the on Shride skill is during your turn when your unit name uh, Blue Wave Martial Dragon Tetra Boil Dragon strides on this card. You can choose one of your vanguards. It gets plus 3,000 power, which I usually forget about, I feel like. Um, and then when this unit attacks a vanguard, choose up to two of your rear guards, stand them, and they get plus 3,000 power if it's the second battle. Um, so very, very good. Allows you to get off Tetra Boil really, really easily with on Onshred skill. And uh, Tetra Boil is a really pressuring turn in, all, in this deck. So uh, you always want to be sure to be on Anger Boil. Um, however, this is our backup grade 3. Um, Blue Wave Dragon Tetra Drive Dragon. And uh, this card is more for, like, if your opponent is running some kind of early rush deck. Like, for some reason when I was testing, I came up against, like, a lot of, like, Grade 1 Rush, 7Cs, uh, there was like a Grade 1, 2 Rush Dimension Police deck, like 
I don't know. People like to do a lot of scummy things, so this helps you keep them in check. Um, where if you will just ride Tetra Dive instead, you'll probably just win that matchup altogether just because of how strong the Limit Break 4 is. But, yeah, if you're on a stride deck, uh, if you're against a stride deck, you probably want to be on Anger Boil. If you're not against a stride deck, you probably want to be on Tetra Drive. Um, if that deck doesn't focus on striding and they don't allow you to, uh, they don't ever ride to grade three. Pretty much this is the better second option. Um, its ability is uh, Limit Break 4. Uh, at the end of the battle, the, this unit attacked a Vanguard. If it is the second battle of that turn, when this unit originally attacks, you can, uh, at the end of the battle, uh, it, it gets an ability, basically. Um, and then at the end of the battle of the fourth battle, uh, that one of your rear guards attacks a vanguard, you can counterboss two, choose two Aqua Force cards from your hand, discard them, and then this unit restands. So, restanding against grade one seven seeds and stuff like that is just really, really efficient, um, and really, really good. Like, your opponent can't do much to, uh, try to fight you on it. Uh, also has an activation counterboss one skill plus 2000 power to it. Uh, not really useful. Um, and then if you want to, uh, you have Lord on your Vanguard. So against like Nubatama, when they get Murkuro, uh, they won't be able to dominate your Vanguard if it has Lord, I'm pretty sure. So uh, yeah, that will allow you to do that. Uh, then for the grade twos, we run four Foivos, um, four Taito Assault, and four Lucianos. What Foivos does is it has a wave ability that's the third battle. Um, so wave three times. So basically during the third battle, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, if you have a Vanguard with blue wave in its name, you can counter boss one and this unit gets plus 2000 power. And then at the end of that battle, you stand this unit. So it allows you an extra attack just for attacking with it on the third battle. A uh, very, very good version of Tidal Assault, in my opinion, just for blue waves. Uh, Tidal Assault. Uh, at the end of the battle, this unit attacked a Vanguard. If you have an Aqua Force Vanguard, stand this unit, and it gets minus 5,000 power, and then this ability can't be used for the rest of the turn. Um, Tidal Assault can be good and bad at times, in my opinion. Uh, first of all, it's not a blue wave, so sometimes that hurts the synergy in this deck. Um, but as well, like it losing 5,000 power when it restands means that like sometimes the columns are really weak, um, or sometimes you can't hit them after you restand. So, uh, yeah. Uh, then we have our other blue wave uh, grade 2, Lucianos. Lucianos, in my opinion, is really, really good, but he conflicts with um, Anger Boils on Stride Skill um, and Anger Boils uh, Generation Break 2 as well. So what Lucianos does is it has an activation skill that you can activate during the main phase. Uh, if you want to activate it, you counterboss one blue wave card. And if you have a grade 3 or greater Vanguard with Blue Wave in its name, this unit gets plus 2,000 power until the end of the turn and an ability until the end of the turn uh, that says Wave 2, uh, the second time only. Uh, at the end of the battle that this unit attacked a Vanguard, it can stand. So what happens is, um, ideally you want to attack with your Vanguard and then stack all the triggers on Lucianos. Um, and then you can attack with Lucianos and then restand Lucianos immediately after they attack with the triggers still on it. So it's good for swinging in that way. But if you're going into, like, um, Tetra Boil or something, probably a Tidal Assault or Foivos would be better for that turn. Um, then we have uh, 4 Nikki, uh, Kelpie Rider Nikki. This is the Stride Fighter for Rock Forest. Pretty self-explanatory. We want a Stride in this deck. Um, 4 uh, Play-Doh. This is the Unflip PG. Uh, Counterblasts are important to us, especially since our new G Guardian Counterblasts. Um, 4 Suisha. Or in this in English, this card is called uh, Stacia, I think. Yeah. So uh, it has a Generation Break One ability that says during your turn, this unit gets a Continuous Skill, and the Continuous Skill is this unit can attack from the back row. But it, and it also gets an Auto ability that says when this unit attacks, if it's in the back row, it gets plus three thousand power. So you can actually sit this in the back row, and it's a it's a nine k um, attacker from your back row, but a 6k booster from your back row. So you can actually like sit these in the back row and attack their, their rear guards, their 9k rear guards from the back row uh, to increase your number of attacks for the turn. It's actually very, very solid. Uh, then we run two Bright Shooter just to get back our Stride Fighter. We do run seven grade threes um, and four Stride Fighter. So, you know, not, not the normal, um, even though it's only one card off, like not the normal eight grade threes, four Stride Fighters for maximum stride potential 
Um, basically, Bright Shooter just refunds us for doing things that we already do well in this deck. So I, I really like this card. Uh, but at the end of the battle, this unit boosted. Um, if you if it's the fourth battle or more, then and you have a Vanguard with Blue Wave in its name, you can choose up to one Grade Three from your drop zone and put it into your hand. So basically, like when you stride at the beginning of the turn with the Grade Three, like you can just get it back with Bright Shooter the same turn. Um, so it's very very good, almost like a free stride cost. Uh, then we have one Blue Wave Dragon Dra uh, Dagger Master Draco Kid. This card is absolutely amazing in my opinion. Um, it's really just an uh, additional version of Brutal Trooper. But what this card does is you kind of boss one and put it into your soul. Uh, you choose one of your vanguards with Blue Wave in its name. And then until the end of the turn, it gets two different abilities. The first ability is Wave Second Time or More. So any time after the second battle when, the, uh, when your unit attacks a vanguard, you can draw a card. And then uh, the Wave uh, Fifth Time or More. So if it's the fifth time or more. Uh, when this unit attacks a vanguard, it gets plus one critical. So you basically want to use this in compare or uh, in combination with Tetra Boa Dragon, since it is a restander. Um, the second time that you attack, uh, you want to attack with Tetra Boa second, so that you can draw a card off of Dagger Master and any Brutal Trooper stacks that you may have going. And then when you restand later, you draw a card and it gets a critical. So it's very very strong. Brutal Trooper, same thing. Uh, Brutal Trooper just uh, allows you to put this unit, uh, you can play it on the rearguard circle, then you can activate the activation ability, which the cost is putting on the top of your deck. And then uh, if you do, uh, if you have a Vanguard with Blue Wave in its name, you choose one of your Vanguards and it gets a wave ability that says this unit, uh, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, you draw a card and then you shuffle your deck. So um, not you shuffle your deck after you draw a card, but you shuffle after you use this ability. So. Basically what this allows you to do, like let's say that you have one Dagger Master and four Brutal Trooper on the turn that you go into Tetra Boil. You can put all of your crits back into your deck and Dagger Master into the soul. And then when your Vanguard attacks, you'll draw five. And then when your Vanguard restands, you'll draw five. So it's very, very good um, for building advantage in this deck. Like this deck probably gets more advantage than most Aqua Force decks, I would say. Uh, which is why I like playing it and probably why it was the best um, version to do the GB8 from. Um, so then we have three Supersonic Sailor. Um, so what Supersonic Sailor does is if we have an Aqua Force Vanguard, we can shove it into our soul and then we flip a card face up from our damage zone. Uh, very good because we use a lot of counter boss in this deck. Uh, four Battle Siren Marika. So what Marika does is we can shove her into the soul and choose one of our Aqua Force units and it gets plus 3000 power. So this really helps when you have like Things that can't hit the Vanguard by themselves, like Tidal Assault, um, Stacia, stuff like that. Uh, give it 3k and then no worries. So uh, we do run 5 draw triggers in this build. So the additional draw trigger that we run is Surge Breath Jaco Kid. Uh, just a vanilla draw trigger, to be honest. Um, and then we run 4 Officer Cadet Ionis. So Ionis is our new heal from the Fighters Collection. Uh, basically what it does is it is one of the drop one draw ones. So whenever we go into uh, our bigger Ionis, which is our G Guardian from the Fighters Collection, we can drop a grade one or less from our hand and draw a card. So pretty good for filtering our hand out. Um, we have, uh, getting to our G zone, we have four Tetra Royal Dragon. Uh, I've talked about this a lot like in the past few moments with all the different cards involved. But what Tetra Boa Dragon does is it's Generation Break 2, so you want to go into it when you're uh, when it's your second stride or more, or if you've G-guarded um, at least once, and then you go into it. So um, what you do is you when this unit attacks a Vanguard, if you're Generation Break 2, you can counter blast one and flip a Tetra Boa from your G zone face up, and then uh, this unit gets in a, a minus one drive and an ability, so uh, it goes from triple drive to twin drive, and then if uh, the ability is at the end of the battle that your rearguard attacked a vanguard, uh, if it's the fourth battle or more, you can choose one card from your hand, discard it, and then stand this unit. So this unit is a way better version of, um, of Tetra Drive, which is why I say like against stride decks beyond anger boil, against uh, non-stride decks beyond Tetra Drive, because Tetra Drive is literally just the non-stride version of Tetra Boil. But this card is so, so strong, especially with like, the stacking that you get from uh, if you have multiple Brutal Troopers and a Dagger Master, um, like it, it just gets so strong. You draw so many cards. Uh, your opponent is pressured, and it, it just does a lot of good things for you. 
Then we run uh, two Lambros. Uh, what Lambros does is when this unit attacks a Vanguard, if it is the fourth battle of that turn or more, you can flip a Lambros face up in your G-Zone and then choose two of your rear guards, stand them, and then if the number of cards in your G-Zone is two or more, which they should be if you're using this card, um, then this, the unit stood with this effect get plus 10,000 power. So Lambros is a very, very good card. Uh, usually I just use it to force like cards out of my opponent if I no longer have t access to Tetra Boil. Uh, through G-Sist or otherwise. Uh, we do have two Storm Dominator Commander Thavis in this deck. So what Commander Thavis does is it's an activation skill. You can uh, choose a Commander Thavis uh, from your G-Zone and turn it face up. If you do, you choose one of your rear guards and it gets plus 5,000 power and the ability to attack from the back row. And then uh, if you're using it in your Generation Break 3, which means if you've already strode at least once or used the G-Zone card, uh, before going into this card, it, you get a uh, Generation Break 3 Wave 4 um, ability that says when your unit attacks a Vanguard, if it is the fourth battle, you uh, choose three of your opponent's rear guards and your opponent chooses one from one of them and retires it. So if your opponent has less than three rear guards, like they just have one, then you choose that one and your opponent retires it. If they have two, you choose two, they choose one and retire. Uh, so very, very solid card. Usually though, we're using this as our first stride, so we usually don't get this second ability. Because um, it's not that important. Uh, we obviously, since this is a GB8 deck, we run uh, one of the GB8 Blue Vortex Martial Dragon Last Twister Dragon. Um, this is basically where Hurricane Irma came from. This guy. Actually, it's not. Because Hurricane Irma is strong. This guy's weak. Uh, this guy's not that great, in my opinion, guys. But uh, the Generation Break 8 skill is uh, you counter boss one during your main phase and then to the end of the turn this unit gets a vanguard ability that says uh from the from the second wave to the fourth wave so every attack from the second to the fourth attack so second third and fourth attack when your rear guard attacks uh it gets plus five thousand power and at the end of the turn or at, at the end of the battle of that battle um you look at the four cards from the top of your deck call one card to the rear guard circle with the attacked unit and then if the uh, called unit has the wave ability then that unit and this unit get plus 5,000 power until the end of the, your turn and then you shuffle your deck so what ends up happening is this deck has like or this card has some weird interactions because um things that can make it better is if in general the card call just got 5k so you're already you're always doing plus 10,000 um, and always adding 5k to it uh, and I wish it didn't have to be a wave ability like that kind of sucks about it and then it also sucks that you have to call the rear guard that's called um, to the uh, to the same rear guard circle with the unit that you just attacked with so if you don't have uh, units to attack with like if you're against control and they destroy your unit well you can no longer do it which is really really crappy in my opinion uh, moving on, we have one Wailing Thavis, uh, one of Aquaforce's most amazing cards, in my opinion. Uh, if I wasn't focused on running a GB8 deck, I'd probably run this at two. Uh, so it has a Generation Break 3 ability and a Generation Break 2 ability. The Generation Break 3 ability is when this unit attacks, your opponent chooses one of their rear guards for each battle of rear guards that attack this turn and retires it. So let's say that uh, you had. A rear guard attack on the left, a rear guard attack on the right, a rear guard restand on the right, and attack again, and then like a Stacy attack from the back row. Um, when you attack with Wailing Thavis, that's been four attacks, so your opponent retires four rear guards. So it's very, very solid, a uh, really good board wipe card if you face something that you need to board wipe them. And then also its Generation Break 2 ability is a uh, wave three times or more when this unit attacks. Uh, you can counter boss one, and until the end of the battle, this unit gets plus 5,000 for each battle of rear guards that attacks during this turn. And your opponent cannot call grade one cards from their hand to the guard circle. So your opponent can't PG this, um, and then it gets plus 5,000 for every card that um, that you attacked with your rear guard. So most of the time, like let's say you get off three attacks, this card gets 15k, and then it also uh, cannot be guarded with PGs. So a 41k. Uh, without the ability to guard with PGs, it's pretty solid, pretty strong, guys. Especially if your opponent's at 4 or 5 damage, it can become like a really scary card for them to fight against. Um, we have one Air Element Sabreeze, in case our opponent tries to screw us. Uh, we have Sabreeze, if they ride a grade 2, and if they ride a grade... Or if they only stay on 1, then we have uh, Tetra Drive Dragon for that. Um, 
Then for our G Guardians, we run two Guard Leader of Sky and Water, Ionis. This is the new Fighters Collection G Guard that we got. Um, is honestly, this G Guardian is leagues better than the GB8. Like, it, this G Guardian is so good. Um, the unfortunate thing is that this G Guardian is like meant to protect you against control um and against like people attacking your rear guards but honestly if you're against control they're just gonna board wipe you before they go into the battle phase so this card becomes kind of useless at that point which is sad but um this this g guardian is still very very good uh when your g unit is placed on the guard circle uh, or when this unit is placed on the guard circle, you can counter boss one and flip a G guard in face up. Then if you do, you choose up to five of your rear guards and they get resist and they get an uh, effect that says it cannot be hit. So if your opponent like attacks into a rear guard, you can use this and block all your rear guards from being hit or uh, resist it and you give all of them resist so they can't be targeted by abilities either. And for each unit chosen, this unit gets plus 5,000 shield. So this uh, unit is also a very good shield amount. Like if you have five rear guards, it gets plus 25k shield, um, automatically becoming a 51k shield. So very, very good card. Um, we run two Blue Storm Barrier Dragon, Ice Barrier Dragon. So what Ice Barrier Dragon does is when you're on either, when your opponent is attacking with either their first attack or their fourth attack or more, then this unit gets uh, plus 10,000 shield when it's placed on the guard circle. So pretty good. You pretty much, but, uh, you pretty much just want to use this when your opponent's attacking for the first time or the fourth time. And I uh, use this one if your opponent's attacking for the first or second time. Third is the third attack is kind of like your weakness as far as G guardians. So hopefully you have like a PG if they attack like rear guard, rear guard, vanguard. Um, but what Philotia does is when it's placed on the guard circle, if it is the first or second battle of the turn, it gets plus 5,000 uh, shield power. So very, very good card. Um, like I said before, like your weakness with G Guardians is in Aug Force pretty much the third of attack. Um, so hopefully you have a PG for that or you're just able to no guard it. But we are loading the replays up here. So Blue Wave, GB81. All right, so uh, first it looks like we're playing against Royal Pot and Brave um, after their update from GBT11, I think it is. So he rides, he starts off, um, I attack him, he no guards, and I crit him. So we're off to a very good start. Um, he decides to rush us with his Grade 1 Silius at the same time getting his uh, new alt mile from it. And we guard his rearguard attack, we take his vanguard, then we attack with uh, Tidal Assault. And uh, you guys see where I was coming from with Tidal Assault goes down to 4k, so it can attack. Um, then he attacks our rear guard with his Sicilis. Then he attacks our other rear guard with his Vanguard. And then he checks a crit and puts it on his rear guard. So uh, we decide to go into Thorm Dominator Thavis. We play our Stacia from the hand. It attacks from the back row. And then we use uh, Thavis skill to let our Brutal Trooper attack from the back row. And uh, he guards us for a 2 to pass. We check a critical trigger um, and we put it all on the Bright Trooper and then he guards our rear guard as well. So he goes into Hobwash um, to get himself two Brave units. Um, and then we guard his rear guard, we take his Vanguard. He does check a critical and a heal trigger um, going down to three damage, which is really good for him. Uh, and then we G guard his, uh, his last attack and he calls a card that won't hit. So. Uh, really, he just discarded a card for no reason, in my opinion. But we do use the new G guard um, because it gets us just enough shield to guard. Uh, then we stride into Tetra Boil. We use Dagger skill to kind of us one shove into the soul. We call Lucianos. And um, we don't use Lucianos skill because uh, because we won't be using it anyways. Like So uh, we do use Tetra Boil, kind of us one flip a Tetra Boil, and then we. Uh, stand two of our cards so we check a draw trigger we add it to luciano's and we check a crit as well and we drew a card off of dagger master um so we do attack his rear guard with the stacia behind our vanguard and then we attack him with luciano's and we use bright shooter since it's the fourth battle then we use tetra to um discard a card and we draw a card and then we check a crit stack it on stacia and we attack his vanguard um, then he uses all the last cards remaining into his hand to go into Brave Lancer Dragon and call three Brave units, which I said like is a perfect situation to use Brave Lancer because he was in a tight spot. Um, he does check a critical, but that is it. Um, we intercept with Lucianos, 
And then uh, he attacks for 29. We do guard him with two 10Ks. And then when his uh, 11K attacks, we guard. Um, and we are able to stride into Tetra Boil again. Uh, play a Tidal Assault. We attack his rear guard for nine. Uh, then we attack with a second battle or more, we stand, and then he no guards, so we do check a draw trigger and a heal trigger going down to four, and he takes the damage and loses, but, um, I, yeah, yeah, so he just takes the damage and loses in this situation, so, uh, like I said, Tetra Boil, guy's really, really strong card, like, usually just, like, it's kind of rare for your opponent to survive Tetra Boil, to be honest. Um, that card is really, really strong. So, going into Blue Wave, GB8, uh, Game 2, we are playing against Chocho, um, the Chocho deck. So, our hand's actually not that great. Like, we don't have a 1 or a 3. Uh, so, we draw a 2. So, we literally G-Assist um, so that we can get a 1. We go into Bright Shooter. Um, and uh, I get rid of two cards and two Tetra Boils. Uh, because it's fine to lose one in my opinion, but I don't want to lose the other cards in my G-Zone. So we do crit him. Um, he checks with his grade one for his Chocho Tira. He gets it. Um, we actually use the crit trigger skill. You can use it early to draw cards. So we do draw cards, but unfortunately they're not a grade three. He attacks our rear guard uh, for 14. And then um, since he just stays on grade two, like we're just able to stay on grade two as well. Um... And he's not he's been punishing us for doing it. So uh, he does check two cards. And uh, we do draw a grade three. So pretty good. And we're able to stride. So we use uh, Storm uh, Thavis to make our starter able to attack from the back row. We check two triggers. And then we're able to attack his Vanguard from the back row. Uh, he uses Chocho Tira skill to uh, put some cards at the bottom of his deck. Use the Onshide skill. Stuff like that. And then he's attacking with his um he forgot to do top seven for a shuffle so he uses top seven discards chocho tira i guard his rear guard um he says no skill for rear guard so i block it with a 10 and then he uses a uh, chocho lapria to return two and then he draws three cards and he checks the heal um he's not playing any cards so i just take one damage uh we stride into tetra boil so i use dagger master I call to and uh, this is what I'm talking about like just off of two units on the board you can attack four times which is crazy but uh, we draw a card then we uh, check double then we attack with Foivos uh, restand Foivos with its own ability and then we use uh, the skill of bright shooter and uh, tetra boil so we draw a card and then we check two we end our turn our opponent goes into Chocho Lapri again um, he attacks our rear guard for 11, we guard it, uh, then he attacks with Spica, then he attacks the rear guard uh, with the Spica called unit, then we PG his vanguard, um, he does Chocho Lapria skill, and calls two units, then he checks a draw trigger, a heal trigger, um, and then we take his last attack, uh, we stride into Lambros here, we play our Tidal Assault, so something very important to note here is I attacked the rear guard, um, with Tidal Assault, uh, but I changed it to attacking Vanguard because otherwise we wouldn't have had fourth attack, uh, like four attacks or more. So I do attack him, uh, wave four, add a grade f a three back to my hand, use uh, Lambros to stand two cards, and we don't check anything with our triggers, so we attack him for 14, then 21. Uh, he strides into Olivia, his hand's pretty massive at this point. Um, at this point we are at GB6, so we have three G Guardians in our hand, so I was pretty sure after this turn that we we're going to do the GB8. Um, so I do guard, then uh, he attacks for 21. This is the second attack. Um, so I just guard with Flotilla, she gets 5k since it's the second battle. Uh, then I G guard again uh, into Ionis, and um, yeah, I just use Ionis. Then I PG his Vanguard. Uh, he checks three cards. Two are critical triggers. We intercept with one. Uh, then he calls a card from his hand. We Ionis again. 
and then we PG again, and we're left with just a single singular grade three in our hand. Uh, we draw um, Stacia, which is kind of fortunate, but unfortunate at the same time. Uh, we go into the GB8. We use the GB8 skill to counter boss one and make our skill active. Then we wave one attack, wave two. So uh, Stacia gets plus five thousand from the GB8 skill. Um, he does guard it, and then we're able to call another uh, Stacia and shuffle. And he takes it. This is the wave three. So then we call, look at top four, call another card over it. Um, since it is wave, it does get 5k. Our Vanguard gets plus 5k as well. And then uh, the fourth battle, uh, we're able to just call another title assault. So uh, hopefully we've thinned out our deck at this point enough to check some triggers. We do check double critical. Um, and this is why I was saying it would be better if it just got plus 5,000 because uh, we would have won in that case if every card that attacked was the plus 5,000. So then he uh, returns my, like li my likeness with uh, one GB8 or his GB8 as well. So uh, we try to uh, block as much as we can and then take the GB8, um, hoping that we will survive with the heal. Um, but we did not survive. And it was actually impossible for us to survive because one of our heal triggers was in our damage zone and uh, three were in our drop zone from G Guardian. So yeah, that was that. We actually lost that one that we went into the GB8. Um, so then we're going into blue wave uh, GB8 game three. Um, and we're playing against Shadow Paladin, so um, not bad. Like, seems like we're playing against Luard. He uh, rides Abyssal Owl, we attack. Um, we actually got a really good hand this time, so not mad at all about that. Um, we take the, some early damage so that we can uh, Tidal Assault efficiently. So with our Tidal Assault, we don't check a trigger, and he does, so that's kind of crappy for us. Like, we probably should have attacked with Rear Guard first. Um, but he does attack us with Vanguard, and he had to ride Death Spray Dragon. So we're already in, a, like, a very a advantageous situation. Um, we do use uh, the Storm Thavis to give the power to Foibos. So uh, we attack, get a heal. We put it on uh, Tidal Assault. And then we put the crit trigger on uh, Foivos, and we attack with Foivos. He does stride into uh, Orgeyser Dragon, using Luard to go to counter boss one, uh, sack his starter, and then um, he calls two. I told him that it's kind of late to use the starter, but I let him do it anyways. Um... So he attacks with Morfessa for 23. I take it. Um, he doesn't choose to call a grade one off of it, which is kind of awkward, to be honest. But uh, it is what it is, I guess. Um, he does tech a heal trigger with his uh, Orgeyser. So we go straight into um, Tetraboil. We use Dagger Master uh, or, and Brutal Trooper. So we just attack with our rear guard. Um, and then we attack with our Vanguard, restanding two units and drawing two cards. We actually checked double critical, but I kept going just so you guys could see what it would look like. Uh, we attack another time with rear guard, we restand, uh, we check a draw trigger, and uh, we draw two cards off of Dagger Master again. And then we attack him for 25, uh, and they would have restood uh, and attacked him for 20 with uh, the Tidal Assault skill. And then this would have been our hand remaining after, so. Uh, I don't think that there's any way that, uh, even if he uh, six damage healed, I don't think that he could have survived. Uh, so yeah, like I said, guys, if you have a, um, if you have your Dagger Master still on the board and you have a Brutal Trooper in your hand when you go into Tetra Bow, like one of the strongest plays you can make in Aqua Force, in my opinion. But yeah, that has been the Aqua Force TB8 deck. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, uh, let me get a like for the video. Uh, it really helps a lot more than you guys think. Um, also, check out the social medias, like I said in the beginning, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Patreon. Uh, for those of you who support on Patreon, thank you so much. Uh, trying to build the community, like I said before. Um, and yeah, with that being said, that has been the video. This has been Josh from Cardfight Empire, and I'll see you guys on the next one.